Uh, but what I really like to spend my time on is how important the beginning premise or the beginning assumption is that people make. And often we don't realize this. Uh, and it's what uh, frequently causes disagreement uh, among people who are of different faiths or of no faith at all because they don't realize what their beginning assumptions are. So let me use an analogy that may be useful. Um, for a, and I'm not a physicist. I'm going to use a physics analysis. If uh, someone here is a physicist and can uh, tell me that I'm incorrect, I'd like to know that. But for a long time, there was an assumption that uh, anything in the universe, we had either particles or we had waves. Um, and something could not be both a particle and a wave. That was an assumption that we went with for a long time. And then uh, with further research, we found that light had some characteristics of particles and some characteristics of waves. Now, if someone were so dedicated to that original assumption that something is either a particle or a wave, they are now in the position where they will have to disallow certain kinds of evidence. If they are sure that, that light is a wave and it can't also have characteristics of a particle, any evidence that suggests it is a particle has to be explained away. Similarly, if you're sure it's a wave, or I mean a, a particle, you'll explain away evidence that it's a wave. I think this is a little bit akin to our assumptions about the validity of revelation as a source of knowledge. There are many people in the world who are certain that that is not a valid source of knowledge. Uh, and beginning with that assumption, then anything having to do with the Restoration and Joseph Smith as a prophet has to be discarded. They have to ignore any evidence that would support that. Uh, and I've seen this happen. I've seen um, people who are critical of Joseph Smith when something uh, comes up that kind of supports uh, something he had translated through inspiration. I've, I've seen emails where they say, well, that can't be true. He couldn't have actually known that, even though it seems that he knew it. That's their attempt to explain things away because it doesn't fit in with their beginning assumption. So I'd like to be clear about my beginning assumption. I believe Revelation is a valid source of knowledge. Uh, we should pursue things with our mind, but we should also pursue it with the part of our mind that listens to the Holy Ghost. And so I start out with an assumption that the Book of Abraham and the Book of Mormon and uh, anything else <coughs> excuse me, that we get from uh, the restored gospel is true. Therefore, any evidence I find, I will try and fit into that paradigm. I don't feel that I need to defend that paradigm. I feel that I want to understand the evidence that I find within that paradigm because to me it's a given that it's true. There are others who will assume that it's not true and on these points we'll just have to agree to disagree but we will understand one another better when we understand how our beginning assumptions uh, color the way we, we filter all of the evidence that we find. 